So the current topic is complexity analysis. So in a typical interview, you are asked to write code for a problem, estimate its time complexity, and then improve its efficiency. So coming up with the correct time complexity is just as important as coming up with the correct algorithm. Interestingly, time complexity is very important when dealing with large amounts of data. So obviously, time complexity is very important when you are interviewing for companies that deal with large amounts of data, like internet companies like Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, Twitter, and so on. Before we get into the technical details of time complexity, let us talk of a very interesting experiment in South Africa. Researchers in South Africa try to compare the time taken to transmit data between two locations that were 50 miles apart using a pigeon and using an ethernet connection. So, uh, which of the two you think would have lower time complexity? I mean, intuitively speaking, ethernet seems to be an obvious choice, which is why we all use ethernet instead of transmitting data using pigeons, right? Let us see if ethernet actually has a lower time complexity. So how much time would it take to transfer one amp using uh, a pigeon? Well, the pigeon flies about 50 miles an hour and the two locations are 50 miles apart. So pigeon takes one hour and we have a one Mbps connection. So it just takes one second. What if you have 10 m of data? Well, obviously the pigeon is still going to take the same time because the distance is the same. While the ethernet is going to take 10 seconds because we have a one Mbps connection. Likewise, if you have 32 G of data, the pigeon will still take one hour while the ethernet connection takes eight hours. So what, what, do you, what do you see in the table here? The pigeon always takes the same amount of time irrespective of the amount of data, while the time taken by the ethernet connection increases linearly with the amount of data. So which is why we say surprise. Pigeon is of constant time, transmitting data using Pigeon is constant, while transmitting data using the Ethernet connection is of linear time complexity. But remember, time complexity does not tell you which algorithm is faster. It just tells you the relation between the amount of data and the time taken. In, in the case of Pigeon, it is constant, it doesn't change, while in case of the Ethernet connection, it changes with the amount of data. But in practice, the time complexity does not tell you this. In practice, we know that an ethernet connection is faster, which is why we don't transmit data using pigeons. So this is pretty much the basic take home point that I would like you to take for complexity analysis. And um, by the way, the bigger notation is not algorithmically accurate, but it definitely suffices for programming interviews. Um, under, you know, under intense pressure in an interview, sometimes, time complexity gets pretty challenging. And given how important time complexity estimation is, here are a few tips that could be handy. So if consecutive, you add. If concurrent, you multiply. What I mean by that is, look at the code on the left-hand side. Clearly, the time complexity of the first for loop is n. Clearly, the time complexity for the second for loop is n. But since these loops are not nested, they are one after the other you add their time complexities. The total time complexity is n plus n. On the other hand, on the left-hand side, again, the first loop is O of n, the second loop is obviously O of m. But since they're nested within each other, you multiply. The time complexity is n times m. Huge difference. So, um, here's the code snippet in front of what do you think would be the time complexity of this code snippet? Obviously, it's not as easy. Uh, what makes it challenging is that the number of times the inner loop executes depends on the value of array j and array i, right? So uh, clearly, it's the time complexity is the time complexity of the outer for loop mul multiplied by the time complexity of the inner for loop. But what exactly is the time complexity of the inner for loop. So time complexity is always about the maximum time, you know, the worst case scenario. So 
um, I, you, you would want to think of what would make the inner for loop run the maximum number of times. So let's say the array, the array is sorted in ascending order. How many times would the inner for loop run? Is, is, is that probably the worst case scenario? Is that probably the scenario in which the inner for loop would run maximum number of times? So um, in time complexity, we are always interested in the worst case scenario. So if, if you're not, if you're not sure of uh, how many times uh, L for loop or some other loop is going to run, always think of the worst case scenario. In this case, you might want to assume that the array is sorted and then try to come up with the time complexity. I leave the, I leave coming up with the exact time complexity of this code as an exercise to you. But um, that was pretty much all that you needed to know about time complexity. So it's time to take on some code snippets and try to estimate the time complexities.